Dr. Robert Smith. Baseball has long been called America's favorite pastime. And even if you don't believe the theory that Union General Abner Double A invented the game in 1839, it is only an American game, but not so much anymore. Baseball is now played in many countries around the world, and one of the moving forces in that in recent years is Dr. Robert Don't Call Me Bob Smith. As president of the International Baseball Association for over a dozen years, he is credited with getting baseball accepted into the Olympics as a medal sport. He oversaw the winning of the first gold medal in baseball when Cuba won in 1992. I covered the U.S. win baseball gold at the games in Sydney in 2000. Smith has local roots. He graduated from Greenville College in 1957 and began working with the United States Olympic Committee in 1977. He was elected president of the International Baseball Federation and held that position for several years. During his time as the international leader of amateur baseball, he coordinated 26 World Baseball Tournaments while continuing to serve on the United States Olympic Committee. He directed baseball competitions at the Olympics in Los Angeles, Seoul, and Barcelona. While doing all of that, he served Greenville College as Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Eventually, Dr. Smith was chosen as the school's president. Perhaps his biggest honor, next to be married to his wife Joanne for 61 years, the International Olympic Committee awarded Smith the Olympic Order, the highest honor given by the IOC. Don't call him Bob, so what do we call him? Well, everyone who knows him just calls him Ish. Tonight, we call Ish a Southern Illinois treasure and a member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Ish, unlike the uh, previous and future honorees, you're getting interviewed by a banker tonight, so I guess we better start out chronologically and Let's talk a little bit, uh, you know, today USA Baseball has a glittering facility out in North Carolina and their budget's like 150 million bucks. Uh, when you started the trail uh, with this, uh, tell us a little bit about the offices and uh, how USA Baseball uh, got its go in Greenville, Illinois. Well, I uh, got my start with the NAI, National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics was asked to serve on the uh, U.S. Olympic Committee and the United States Baseball Federation because of that. And uh, the first job I got, the banker would appreciate, was secretary treasurer because nobody else wanted it and we didn't have any money, so really I was a secretary. But then uh, Commissioner Kuhn sent us a $25,000 check and I had money, so now I'm not only a secretary, I'm a banker. And that, that got us started. That was the beginning. And uh, so it went from there to in 1980, when I went to my second World Congress, I was elected president of World Baseball. Well, I was actually elected vice president. The president, unfortunately, was in jail in Nicaragua. And so my job was to get baseball in the Olympics, get Carlos Garcia out of jail, and then run world tournaments and then be Rich Stevens, vice president at Greenville College. So it was just a piece of cake. <laughs> you mentioned the turbulence, uh, having to get one of your comrades out of the Huskow to get uh, international baseball rolling toward the Olympics. That was such an amazing time in the late 70s and early 80s in the Olympic movement to get a sport authorized and at a time when you've got us boycotting the the Olympics in Moscow, which cost you know one of our local guys, uh, Craig Virgin, a right. shot, and then, and then they boycotted the ones in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, walk us through that process because uh, you met some interesting characters along the way, uh, <laughs> including a little uh, dictator just south of Down Miami. South, yes. And uh, yeah. let's talk us uh, through how all that came to be. Well, my friend down south, uh, uh, Mr. Castro. Uh, was actually helpful to me in some very important ways along the way. Uh, but my birth, God in some way knew what he was doing when he got me uh, created and born in 1936 because just as I was moving into NAI leadership and the United States Baseball Federation, a decision was made to send the Olympics to Los Angeles. So all around the baseball world, they were saying, if ever we had a chance 
to get baseball in the Olympics. It would be now going into LA, going to the country of the baseball origin, going into the greatest baseball city besides St. Louis in the world. And so uh, they thought it was at the time. So this, an American unknown to most baseball leaders around the world was elected president. And uh, it was very political. Uh, several questions are regular questions I'm asked, but one of them was why wasn't baseball in the Olympics a long time ago? Mainly because we could not have the very best players in the Olympics. Uh, you couldn't get the major leaguers there uh, during the summer when the games are played. And the Olympics are based so much on television revenue. And without the Ozzie Smiths and the number one players uh, being there, uh, the IOC just wasn't interested in us. Until the Olympics came to LA and we had such a great success in those games that the president of the IOC, uh, Juan Antonio Samarant, in the in closing interview said, the one thing I've learned in 1984 is that baseball belongs in the Olympics. But when President Samarant wants it in the Olympics, it's going to be there. So a big part of our work was done because of Peter O'Malley and the Dodgers and, and all that uh, happened in 1984. Uh, that was a demonstration sport. 88 was a demonstration sport. But then 1996 in Barcelona, it was gold medal, and we'd reached our goal. Very good, Dr. Smith. Uh, in, throughout your life, uh, both in international baseball and subsequently uh, with your work with Fellowship of Christian Athletes and something that you know people out in this room tonight should know about you in, in our little rural area, over your time with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, you raised well north of $2 million for, for that very good cause. And you made a lot of friends along the way. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the folks who passed through Greenville and who you have worked with so closely, not just in the baseball world, but... Well, my interviewer is being modest because Forrest Langenfeld was an important part of that, helping us raise money by helping us with our, with our uh, silent auctions time and time and time again. But some of those interesting people who've come through Greenville, uh, probably one of the most famous or infamous is Tommy Lasorda. Uh, he's been there about three times to help us with various projects. Uh, we've had almost every cardinal retiree that we could possibly get uh, from uh, Ricky Horton to uh, the, you know, the rest of the ones that have retired. We've had uh, Bobby Bowden there from FSU. We've had uh, the Nebraska coach, the outstanding retired Nebraska coach. We've just been able to, to have some wonderful guys come and uh, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been the reason for that. And that FCA has been such a, an important part of my life. I'm really, really thankful for it. It's kind of in wrapping up, uh some of us were talking out in the audience earlier. You made, a, what, two trips down to Havana to meet with Fidel or just one? I, Try seven. So that it was, was seven times. Could yeah. you talk a little bit? You know, as a kid growing up, I'd see those green fatigues that he was wearing till I came to your house and saw a big blown-up picture of those. Could you describe those to our friends out here? Uh, well, uh, Fidel Castro was probably the reason I was elected for my second term. The uh, uh, Congress for the election was in uh, Havana, and I was running against uh, a Puerto Rican who had been in international baseball probably 20 years, and a, a person from Italy who had probably been in international baseball 40 years, and I had been in international baseball four or five years. But uh, on the second day of the Congress, the Cuban said to me, Bob, put your vice president in charge. We've got to make a call. Well, that call was to Fidel Castro's office. And we spent two and a half hours bonding. <laughs> we actually became very close friends. But about halfway through that interview or that time together, uh, Fidel Castro said to me, Dr. Smith, I guess you wonder why I'm here, why you're here. And I said, well, yeah, I sort of do. 
He said, well, I want you to know that uh, we've decided, which meant he had decided, that Cuba was going to support me over the other two candidates. Because he said, we learned that we can't trust the Puerto Rican and we can't trust the Italian, but my people says that we can trust you. Well, that was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. At 5 o'clock that night on all the newspapers in Havana, it's Cuba and Fidel Castro support Smith. The two guys running against me withdrew before the night was over and I went in, you know, by acclamation the next day. So I owe Fidel uh, quite a bit. One other Fidel story. Uh, he said to me, you know that uh, I was a pretty good baseball player. Well, in Cuba, I said, yeah, I know that. Uh, didn't want to disagree with him. He said, uh, he said you know, I was, uh, uh, the New York Giants looked at me as a possible pitcher. Well, smilingly, I said to him, uh, President Castro, there's lots of people in my country who wished you had been a baseball player. <laughs> Three days later, the, the uh, USA Today has that column of sports that runs down the front page. That story was in there. Well, I'm wondering if they had that room bugged or, or how that got back. But uh, I was lucky, I was fortunate, God has been so good to allow me to do the things that he did all the time. Greenville College was so good by allowing me to do uh, both baseball and college fundraising. Welcome to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you, I'm honored.